Good morning and welcome to Paul T's World on this absolutely glorious morning. It's wall-to-wall -wall sunshine, blue skies all the way, just how I like it. So I thought I would bring out Madame Clivia to enjoy the sunshine after she's been inside all winter. And in this episode, we're going to have a look at the shed bed and the new plants that I've bought, the decisions I've made, where I'm going to put them and why. Let's just have a look at the bed at different times of the day so we can see where the shadows fall, where the sunniest part of the garden is and where the shady part is. So let's go and have a look. Now this is the bed at midday. So much of this particular border, the shed border, the shed bed is in sunshine for the whole morning, but not the whole afternoon. So as we've already seen, we have the rhododendron that I've put over in the corner there. It's a woodland plant, doesn't need sunshine all day. So I've put it towards the left of the bed because that will be in shade in the afternoon. The deciduous azalea, even though I've put it on the left hand side of the bed, it is forward and so it'll get sunshine for most of the day. We've got the grisolinia that I put in the other day. It's doing okay. And now let's have a look at some of the plants that I've been buying over the last week and where I'm going to put them. We've got this azalea here. It's a red azalea. I find that azaleas are fine in the sunshine in Britain. Perhaps in gardens with much hotter sunshine, they might be better in dappled shade because they are indeed woodland plants. So I'm going to put the azalea there in front of the deciduous azalea. So it's going to grow up like this. The polymonium. Jacob's Ladder. Now it is okay in slightly shadier conditions, so I'm going to put it back a little bit so it's in the sunshine but also partly in the shade. And I'm putting this here because I want it to fill in with a nice little mound here towards the front of the border. And as a matter of interest, I've got some forget-me-nots here. They've self-seeded. You have to be a little bit careful with forget-me-nots because they can self-seed all around the garden. I noticed I had a Dicentra bleeding heart in the old woodland bed and so I've split it and I've put it down there. Dicentra are a woodland plant. They're okay in partly shady conditions. So I've just popped it away there. In the sunny part of the bed here, I have the wall and the archway. So the wall is there. I built that wall from some stones that I had over from having a large sandstone wall built in the front garden. And here's the archway. I've decided between the wall and the archway is, is this ornamental elderflower. And as a matter of interest, this is also is an elderflower, but this is the native British species. They grow as big as you like and you can cut them back as much as you like. Because as you can see here, I cut this back quite a lot last year. It was right up there. I've got honeysuckle growing up the archway. That's this side and this side here. I planted the masquerade climbing rose to come up this side. It was in another part of the garden and wasn't happy. So I'm trying it here. If a plant isn't happy somewhere, dig it up and put it somewhere else. So moving back to the shed bed, 
I have an area here between the archway and the wall and I want it filled because we have the ornamental elderflower that's a bit leggy at the bottom and I want that covered and of what I've decided to do is put this euonymus here. Let's have a look. Here we are, Euonymus ovatus oreras. Euonymus japonica ovatus. So I'm going to put it about there, nice bright leaves, and it is going to grow and fill in this whole area here. And it will grow to four to 2.5 meters. It will grow four meters high and two foot and 2.4 meters wide. So it'll fill this whole area in here. So it'll be what I call a stopper for the archway. It'll hide all the spindly legs of this elderflower and you will not see the edge of the wall because I want the wall to look as though it goes further. So it will, if you like, disappear behind this euonymus and it'll look like it's a lot longer. And in fact, that's what this plant is going to do on this side. So this is the Berberis I bought the other week and featured in the plant hall. So it's a Berberis Venice. It's got gorgeous red leaves. Obviously it's thorny. If you don't like thorny plants, you might want to stay clear of these. And also I've heard that in North America, where you have a lot of deer, that I think the deer brush up against these either accidentally or deliberately. And so you get a lot of ticks I've heard in North America. But that's just what I've heard, so I don't know. You'd have to check up yourself. But in Britain, we don't really have that problem. So this is going to grow one and a half meters high. So the idea here is that this shrub will fill this area here. And again, it will look as though the wall goes further along. It'll, it'll hide the edge of the wall. So it won't look like a little mound. It'll look like a proper wall. So there's the Berberis and it looks gorgeous. It'll have yellow flowers. The light in the, in the evening comes from over the left there and lights up this backlit. Looks absolutely gorgeous. This is an Epimedium that has been in this bed a while. I moved most of it over to the bed behind the pond. But this, obviously, I missed this bit, so I'm going to leave it. So the way I design a bed, first of all, I'm not a designer. I'm just like you. In fact, less experienced than some of my viewers. Now, the way I'm designing this bed is trial and error. I don't put things down on paper. I just get on with it. It all depends on the plants available. Some of the plants I'll have got from layering from other plants in my garden or other people's gardens. Some are got from cuttings, some from the garden centre and some from ordering online. So what I don't do is like these famous gardeners, the professionals, Alan Titchmarsh in Britain. He will go and do a garden and he'll turn up with a 500 plants. He'll put all the plants in place in the bed, stand back, rearrange them, plant them, and then go off to the pub for a pint of beer. That's not how it works with me. <laughs> the way it works with me is I make it up as I go along, depending what I've got available. And it'll take all summer, it'll take all year to fully finish the bed. But essentially my view is that I want shrubs. I want the shrubs as the mainstay, some of them being deciduous, because that gives a lot of interest in the autumn, excitement in the spring, and some of them are evergreen, and they make the constant structure. And that rhododendron, for example, is a classic example. It's totally evergreen, it'll be there all the time, and there's the structure. And also the grisolinia, the hedge at the back, that also is evergreen. Then you've got the deciduous shrubs 
and in amongst I will plant some perennials. Uh, they will probably be moved depending on how they look when they actually grow. But the whole bed isn't designed in one go. All the plants bought and put in. It'll evolve and that's how I prefer to do it and it's also cheaper. The hedge was put in because I don't want to see that fence. I don't like the hardness of the fence and of course there's someone's garage behind. So when that chrysalinia grows up six or seven feet that will soften this whole area. I'm softening the shed by growing up the climbing hydrangea, the clematis which is growing over it, the montana, and also there's this very pretty Chinese creeper, Virginia creeper, which turns that gorgeous autumn colour. So there's the basis. We've got a little bit of a mound plant at the front, Jacob's Ladder, a little bit of height with the deciduous azalea, Hiding the legs of the deciduous azalea will be this evergreen azalea. I might even get another one. Already got this dicentra, this particular one with the fern-like leaves. is a slightly different type from the classic bleeding heart and this can take much more sun. There will be some ground cover that I'll put round here. I'll get some ground cover for the front of the bed. Uh, Agastache, Aguja, Ajuga. Uh, many of those have got blue flowers. So I bought this one. And this is a Halimium. And this has yellow flowers, so I thought blue and yellow will look nice. So it will go somewhere there. A hydrangea can go in the middle. Then we've got some nice shrubs putting body into the border. Later on, next month, there will be some perennials. I've ordered a lot of plug plants. We'll see what those are, six or seven different varieties. I'll grow those on a little bit and then fill in the gaps so the bed will look full this summer and there'll be plenty of colour. We'll see how they look with these shrubs and then adjust accordingly. There were a few lily of the valley about that were in this bed before, so I've just left them. I'll probably put them all in one place at a later stage. So that's the shed bed starting to take shape. So my next job, of course, is to actually plant these. Now I've decided where they're going to go, I'll plant them. I'm not going to worry too much if I make mistakes, get things wrong. All plants can be moved, more or less. <laughs> and that's how gardens evolve. And I'll see you next time in Portese World. Bye.